is it audible you can hear me properly you can hear me properly hello yes sir you can hear me properly no yes sir yeah okay okay yes, yes. so good morning to everybody uh, <coughs> so you must have got uh, the schedule of mpa 11 so carefully listen to this uh, what i am telling you have new schedule of mpa 11 that is on 6th 7th 13th 14th 20th and 21st once again i repeat 6th 7th 13th 14th 20th and 21st this is for mpa 11 classes uh, from 10 to 12 pm Okay. I think you have started writing perhaps uh, the assignments. Once again, I request you, all of you, that you know, while writing the assignment, please mention your name in capital letters, enrollment number. academic year assignment number course code program in the covering page in the assignment please mention why i am telling yesterday also i have seen some online this thing uh, assignment came there was no roll number there was no name there was no question paper there was no uh, what is that assignment number nothing So we have to upload the mark where. So I repeat, when you are writing the assignments, please mention your name in capital letters because sometimes it is very, it has become very difficult to understand the name. Sometimes we are unable to distinguish male or female. Sometimes you know you are not writing the program code. sometimes you are not writing the course code you are not writing the assignment number not all i am telling you have to write the study center code that is 14000 why i am telling this because from other study center also assignments are sometimes you know coming so study center code once again program code assignment number then course code then your enrollment number your name study center okay these are the things you have to mention without fail okay otherwise no very difficult to and uh, then i forgot to tell you you have to when you are uh, start, uh, starting the assignment or whatever is whenever you are starting kindly attach kindly attach one copy of the question paper one copy of the whatever assign uh, the, the you know assignment number or something like the question is there you know which you are uh, for which you are giving the reply the question number also you have to write a uh, question paper copy also you have to attach question paper copy you know why some people are appearing 1917 18 some people are 18 19 18, some people 19 20 then 20 21 the question paper will differ so unless you attach a question paper it will become difficult to evaluate because some paper some questions are in 20 mark some questions are in uh, 10 mark so how without uh, attaching the question paper it will become difficult because you know otherwise if everything we have to go in the googles and find out in you know, evaluator so please attach this one copy of the question paper also along with the assignment without fail okay so let me start <coughs> today i'll be uh, taking unit 12 mpa 11 unit 12 mpa 11 unit 12 12 role of bureaucracy in policy formulation implementation and analysis 
role of bureaucracy in policy formulation, implementation, and analysis. I am taking this topic today. You see, <clears throat> before uh, you know that uh, bureaucracy means Um, you know, IAS, and <clears throat> they are appointed by the uh, UPSC. UPSC. UPSC is a what is that? Uh, it is a statutory body. Jodi, very interesting. Jodi. No. What is she doing? University UPSC UPSC is a statutory body. Bureaucrat means IFS, IAS, IRS, INDAS, many things like that. IFS means you know Indian Forest Service, Indian Foreign Service, everything is there. They are all and IAS, of course. They are all appoint, uh, selected by UPSC, which is a constitutional body. Okay. Constitutional body. So what happened uh, before I start? So the so-called bureaucrats. Now, what is our sub topic? Role of bureaucracy in policy, formulation, implementation, and analysis. They are playing vital role in formulating policies on behalf either the state government or the central government or the union territories so they are the because they're very educated and um, in a competitive examination through competitive examination they're uh, you know very transparent way their selection is made so today's uh, class is especially uh, please uh, you know the, those who are IAS aspirants uh, Swiss service anybody is appearing please understand carefully okay so uh, they are uh, contributing a lot for the nation's uh, growth and many, many policy uh, formulation they are uh, doing with uh, IAS and uh, other bureaucrats. Now, what is IAS, Indian Administrative Service? Say, this is a Group A, Central Civil Service. IAS, that is Indian Administrative Service, and uh, it is a group A, Central Civil Service. This is coming under the Ministry of Personnel, Public Grievance and Pensions established in 80, 1985. You know, this has come under this department in 1985 directly under the Prime Minister of India. Okay? UPSC. You know, this uh, all these things, personal department of personal, because transfer, appointment, everything is done by in consultation with the Prime Minister of India. So, this is uh, again, I am telling you, this is coming under Ministry of Personal, uh, BIS, IFS, all these things, this is coming under Department of Personal, uh, Ministry of Personal, sorry, Ministry of Personal, Public Grievances and Pensions from since 1985. Now, you have to understand one aspect. Motto of IAS. Motto. Okay. What is the motto of IAS? Motto. The, you know, aim. Character is the highest virtue. Character is the highest virtue. That is the motto of IAS in English. English version of motto is character is the highest virtue. So you know, now you see our bureaucrats, how their character is, you know very well. You can judge yourself. But how they should function, that I am going to tell. Before that, see, the IAS, there is a Civil Service Institute established in 1959. Civil Service Institute established in 19... This is not in your book. 
I'm just giving the introduction. Civil Service Institute established in 1959. There is Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. Lal Bahadur National Shastri. Sorry, uh, okay. Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of uh, Administration. It is in uh, Dehradun, Mussoorie. Okay. Sorry, Mussoorie, Uttarakhand. Near to Dehradun. Mussoori, Uttarakhand. So, IES, uh, uh, there is a uh, civil service institute also. Lal Bhadu Shastri National Academy of Administration is located in uh, Mussoori, Uttarakhand. There are some other institutes of civil services. One, IPS. For IPS, Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy, Hyderabad. Sardar Vallabha Patel National Police Academy, Hyderabad. Next, for IFS, that is Forest Service, Indian Forest Service, that is Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy in Dehradun, Forest. Then, Foreign Service, again IFS, Foreign Service, that is there is a Foreign Service Institute, India. There is a Foreign Service Institute. Now, as we got IRS concern, Indian Revenue Service is concerned, Training Institute is National Academy of Customs, Indirect Taxes, and Narcotics. One institute is there, National Academy of Customs, comma, Indirect Taxes, and Narcotics. That is IRS. So, so many other you know institutions are also there. So they are all playing a vital role. Very efficient people, highly qualified people. You know that getting selected for IAS is a difficult task. You have to focus on it, and um, definitely, and uh, you know you can. Now I am going to going to tell you what is bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, how our bureaucracy should function. Okay, now bureaucracy has to abide. Please understand those who are civil service uh, you know, an aspirant. This, uh, what is bureaucracy? Okay, bureaucracy has to abide by the spirit of democratic citizenship. It has to promote democratic values of fairness, integrity, Honesty, responsive, responsiveness, equity, justice, commitment, interest, leadership, dialogue, participation, collaboration, and empowerment. Bureaucracy means they are all responsible for this type of things, all bureaucrats. That is, once again, I repeat, bureaucracy has to abide by the spirit of democratic citizenship. It has to promote the democratic values of fairness, okay, integrity, honesty. Then uh, uh, integrity is there, honesty is there, responsiveness is there, equity, justice, commitment, accountability, and uh, trust, then sharing. Then sharing means, you know, interaction. Public interest, you, whatever you are doing, this public interest, you know, civil service. Okay, because you do, you are, uh, whatever policy you are making, it is for the government, uh, either for the state government or central government. So it should be for public interest. Then you should have your own leadership quality. Then you, proper dialogue, discussion should take place, take place where before finalizing any policy, decision. Then participation should be there in uh, during various meetings. Then collaboration and empowerment. You have to delegate the power also to others. So these are some of the objectives of bureaucracy. So how they should function. See, one more aspect which I want to tell you is that. Uh, you see this, uh, they are highly talented. Professionally qualified, and uh, they can do a lot of things for the nation. Because 
nowadays iis they they are having either you know they are engineers in addition to ias you know basically they are engineers or mbbs or whatever is there you know many many qualification they are having so they are uh, uh, you know they have got a thorough knowledge in various areas actually so they they will you know when they make any policy decision for the government it will become easy for them in view of their vast qualification very good quality sound qualification so all are qualified all are talented and uh, without them it will be difficult for the government uh, to formulate many many policies also because our uh, ministers are basically politician you know it is, it is not necessary that they will have more uh, qualifications or something like that and uh, when they want to uh, introduce any bill or formulate any policy for the department or ministry concerned the ias officers or but over it is bureaucrats are uh, framing those rules and procedures or whatever is there and after they are putting up their real boss is minister under minister a bureaucrat is working so uh, while formulating the policy what happens sometime bureau uh, bureaucrat of course in his own way he will make it but it doesn't mean that uh, our minister has to accept that so uh, you have to understand that the, you know what is in the mind of the minister also you know because minister is responsible to the public and legislator also whenever policy making is easy but implementation is difficult you know so minister will face many questions from the general citizen open you know then as well as he has to give the answer in the assembly also so we have to make the policy decisions like that which will help the people and a beautiful way they do make the rules and regulations so all the acts passed by the parliament rajya sabha lok sabha legislative assembly legislative council everything bureaucrats they have got a vital role to play already played and without them it will be sometimes difficult also but a uh, lot of help uh, they are uh, doing but some people are very uh, brilliant and honest and contributing a lot but some of them you know very well they are involved in corruptions and many other bad practices with the result of which the reputation of the civil service sometimes may deteriorate it should not be they have because they have to they are responsible to the society as well because they are getting salary from the tax payer the selection is made by upsc so the central government uh, they are on the role of center government and cadre selection is there but even though punishment the transfer uh, dismissal everything is done by the central government this particular department ministry i am just telling you know it is not important so they are responsible to the tax payer so when they they have to under keep in mind this always now let me start the class i this, this was only an introduction pay <clears throat> public policies are government okay government uh, governmental programs goals and uh, purposes and uh, considered individually or collectively whenever government changes also many policies are also changing okay so uh, you know this is a political managerial system this may be expressed in a variety of forms including law legal ordinance that is public policy mean this is based on laws formulation of public policy is based on laws and uh, legal ordinances court decisions executive orders governmental rules uh, government rules uh, and so on okay so uh, remember when we introduce any public policy 
so there will be some law based on that we have to uh, you know make amendments or whatever is there there will be legal ordinance we have to keep in mind because what happened some legal ordinance from time to time we are the issue then court decision will be there so while formulating any policy court decision should be there see for example when you make a recruitment policy sc st reservation certain decisions are there court has fixed it so that has to, we have to keep in mind and we have to include those points okay then executive order is there from the you know government then government rules are there already rules are there and uh, okay so like that you know uh, based on that we are making certain uh, public policies okay that is bureaucracy so another aspect is that uh, um, you know the bureaucracy presence can also be seen in policy making and policy evaluation so bureaucracy they are making policies and they are doing the evaluation also and because our they have to give the report to the ministry concerned or department concerned okay so policy making such a group theoretic group theoretic means involving interaction between different society groups societal group number 2 incremental incremental means elite you know the higher i higher uh, the thing people theoretic reflecting the values of elites higher higher grade involved in policy formulation we have to take the you know Uh, like uh, big corporates and other things you know what is their uh, opinion when you are formulating budget national budget even our finance minister is interacting with the corporate bankers everything you know they outer getting the view there it is reflected in the budget actually okay then incremental entailing real life constraints of time cost information and policies then institutional concentrating on formulation and execution through institutions okay rational involving policy efficiency maximization then game theory maximizing gains through strategic strategies in conflict and competition you know very well the nowadays you know lot of strategy we have to evolve and the competition we have to uh, you know lot of challenges are the lot of conflicts are the so our policy should be like that to overcome those then systems system mean treating policy in terms of systems of action so in this uh, unit we will highlight the role of bureaucracy okay in all phases okay and aspects of you know the only policy process policy formulation mean policy process number 2 policy for process before that we have to make uh, some you know start up you know so then formulation then implementation see one thing is that we are making lot of policy but you have to implement also you no know? many it is easy to make a policy easy to make promises it is easy to talk but you know when you implement lot of hurdles will be there so bureaucrats should understand before they implement the implications so afterward they have to do the evaluation what the policy they formulated whether they had done or not suppose for example now in the recruitment we are uh, promising that this much uh, this thing uh, what is that um, preservation everything will be whether you had done or not how much reservation you had you had given for uh, you know sc st obc and many other that we what our policy anything on any matter so we have to evaluate and the progress made that has to be reported back to the real executive that is minister that is the duty of the bureaucrat okay now public policy process public policy process okay no public policy process public policy formulation and policy implementation are two distinct and a closely integrated function or inter interrelated functions okay public policy is laid down by the legislator or the political authority okay public policy though our bureaucrats are making policies or they are putting up 
either in the legislature or parliament then only it will become a law okay so for that our bureaucrats they are contributing a lot and they are making good policy they are submitted to the uh, government government uh, they place before either they place before the legislative assembly or parliament okay so they uh, they will uh, discuss on it and they will pass it the uh, policy implementation aspect is supposed to be in the domain of the executive the policy implementation definitely will be done by the government by the station because there are many other you know assistance it is required you know so that is also the then uh, what is wilsonian uh, wilsonian politics wilsonian politics okay wilsonian politics means in his famous article wilson wilson in 1887 outlined what later happened to be called the politics administration the court me a theoretical model that emphasized distinct features of public administration vis-a-vis politics in wilson's 1980 1887 were public administration lies outside the proper sphere of politics public administration means not only politics outside the proper uh, what is that outside the proper sphere of politics also okay for the welfare of the public okay now milleno brook conference in 1966 okay min uh, minno brook okay minno brook conference in 1968 what is minno brook the minno brook conference is held in every 20 years is one of the most significant academy conferences in public administration in the united states of america the once again i repeat the min uh, yes yeah, minno brook conference minno brook conference that is 1968 okay it is held in every 20 years is one of the most significant academy conferences in public administration in usa okay started 1968 okay now in fact in reality administrative what processes and structures have also been witnessed an obvious transgressing okay transgressing what a transgressing that is violation infringement of violation of law amount okay transgressing then transcending transcending means you know to rise above or go beyond the limits that is the thing of this demarcated rules the legislator lays down a policy in general term legislator normally a policy they are making it is usually expressed in the form of constitutional and legal enactment the legislature you know there is uh, that is legal enactment is taking place it can be incorporated uh, that is interpreted in the uh, by in the court also so wording everything should be proper that is vetted by the bureaucrats okay so in order to give precise expression to the government also join hands in policy making normally what happen no the uh, policy before policy making the bureaucrats discuss with uh, you know either in the uh, with the other people like uh, ministers or cabinet uh, you know whatever is there and a final decision is taken by accordingly the rules uh, so are formulated and this role of the administrative arm of the government is policy making has grown importance over the years nowadays it is it has grown you know a lot of changes are taking place amendments are taking place and uh, pro citizen you know welfare oriented policies we to make sometimes cheap policy also we to make you know to get a vote etc favor thing you know dumped on bureaucrats you know and um, sometimes you know we have to blame them also some but uh, the blame always you know uh, the politician normally used to uh, accuse uh, politician won't take blame you know they will just blame the government official only no it should not be that uh, they should equally take the responsibility for the for Im- implementing any policy 
So policy making as well as policy implementation have become a hands of the administration administrators to a large extent. Now, what is policy cycle? Generally include the following stages. Policy formulation includes the following stages. One, whenever we make a policy, identification of policy problems through demand for government action. Okay, number two, agenda setting or focusing the attention of public officials on specific public problems. Number three, formulation of policy proposals that initiation and development by the policy planning organization, executive, legislative, and interest group. You know, there is pressure groups also. When we make a policy, how others are taking. That also you have to keep in mind. Some people will object it. So you can understand very well now farmers' education and everything. When we make a policy, you have to keep in mind this, this type of thing. Now, uh, adoption and legi uh, legitimation of policy through the political actions of the government, in, uh, that I told you, implementation of policy through bureaucracy, public expenditure is involved, and executive agencies, through executive agents, some agency, we are implementing many, many policies. Not, uh, you know, many people are involved, you know, government, uh, you know, many sectors are also, social welfare department is the some other department, uh, you know, so many, so bureaucrats, uh, what happened, uh, injuring a lot of expenditure and uh, through some other agency, they are implementing, executing various policies to reach uh, the down level. Okay. Then afterwards, what happened, when we spend uh, money or, you know, you take the example, one policy decision, after flood, we will rebuild the Kerala. No. Where we have we are standing now. I don't want to make any comment. Where we are standing, please evaluate. So promises are many. Long way to go to fulfill it. And so we had to evaluate each and everything. And uh, you know, we have to correlate what our promises are made by the real executive. Okay. So, unless we implement, then that is the reason why uh, during election time also, ministers are uh, making many, many uh, promises. Oh, sorry, political parties are many, many, making many, many promises. But we have to keep in mind that it is workable or not. But if they win, then afterwards they are supposed to implement those. At that time, they should not cry. Then why, otherwise, you know, why you have made such a promise during election? So we have to evaluate. The bureaucracy plays a vital role for evaluating that and uh, submitting a report. You know very well that financial status of our government also, many other government also, is not up to the mark. So what happens whenever new uh, government comes, white paper on uh, finance, you know, they are uh, asking, you know, the other party, whenever a new party takes, uh, you know, uh, charge immediately, they are uh, asking, you know, uh, to publish in you know, a white paper something, the financial position of the actual position, financial position, uh, you know, of the government, you know, how much, uh, you know, credit or whatever is there, you know, loans and so many other things and liabilities are there. So white paper. So these are the things actually. So we have to evaluate properly. Now, despite the formal control of the civil service by the political executive, ministers are controlling the civil service. Ministers are though they have, okay, but and uh, ministers are the central ministers are also the state ministers are also the then legislative assemblies also uh, sometimes you know the Bureaucrats, whatever uh, you know, policy they are making is going to the assembly also. Also, par in that is you know, dem parliamentary democracy. These type of things are happening. Okay, the, a lot of debates are taking place. Then uh, these aspects are usually embodied in the public policy. What is authorized by the legislator and uh, created in the form of legislation. 
So any legislation, you know, before it goes to the assembly, it is prepared by the bureaucrat in consultation with the stakeholders and afterwards. And because the ministries are not having that much, uh, you know, either uh, uh, you know knowledge. Sometimes some people are the, you know, many of the uh, ministers are not uh, that much educated or something like that. Especially in north, you can see eastern part of India, you can see, and uh, not only that, by, ha by having graduation and post graduation, uh, you know, this type of policy system which can be in interpreted in the courts. The legal everything you know we should know that is the thing and uh, these bureaucrats they are you know very familiar with this type of things okay now in practice the execution of public policy normally is legislation okay depend upon the support of public officials so they whenever you know the government requires public support also no? public support also otherwise what will happen they make a policy and public is not supporting then what will happen they cannot execute public support is also required okay so it therefore a prerequisite that they should trust one another they, to, they should trust one another for public servant politics is sino uh, sine qua non that is something indispensable that is for public servant uh, for politics, indispensable because you know they are reporting to a minister, and tomorrow some other uh, minister uh, from some other party will be, but uh, bureaucrat will be there only. Minister's term is very limited, either you know two year, three year, five year maximum. Again, nine new person will come. Bureaucrat uh, never change. Sometimes you know only either promotion or something they are changing. Okay, but they are tenor. They will not go for the secretary or something like that. You know, <laughs> but. Uh, well, like that in the field, he, they will be there. No? Either, you know, they will be transferred to some other department or something like that. But uh, uh, our uh, ministries are uh, changing. And not only the tenor, maximum tenor is only five, five years. Okay. Now, so uh, I, what I'm telling, public servant, politics also, sometimes the part of, and many, for your information, many of our bureaucrats, you know, either in during the, during their student days, they are they were involved in so and so so and so. So they will show loyalty to their ministries also, which is incorrect. Students days, whatever you do, after when you are occupying the some responsible post, you should be neutral and you should be responsible to society as well rather than obliging your so-called ladies. That is my opinion. During students, okay, we are, we are uh, uh, you know, many things, you know, uh, we will do that. There is no problem at all. But when you are occupying the highest position, uh, at that time, this type of thing, if you do, it will be, it will become disastrous. See? Today's uh, newspaper also, and uh, some of the bureaucrats uh, here, what role they played, and uh, this will happen like that. If you are showing that type of loyalty, tomorrow, remember, this politician will not protect you. Politician is politician. Okay, you start realizing this. If you do, you will suffer. Okay, so when you work, when you are handling a vital job and you should be impartial, neutral, and whatever you do, it is uh, justifiable and with the utmost uh, sincerity by keeping the welfare of the people, you have to function. Okay? Then it will be good for you. Sometimes, otherwise, it will become difficult. Okay? Now. Yes, another aspect. Another aspect. Role of bureaucracy in policy formulation. Policy formulation is often a non-linear process. In, real, in reality, our bureaucracy is deeply involved in proper articulation and shaping of policies, I already told you. Okay? As the policy process 
entire the identification of policy problems and pro policy agenda so we have to make a policy agenda also okay shaping of policy is also the responsibility of the bureaucrat so role of bureaucracy we are going to discuss okay now uh, thomas r d has defined public policy as what our government choose to do or not to do public policy means what government choose to do or not to do okay now for example in you know, a corona time or whatever is the government uh, you know health department issued many many policies what to do what not to be, do okay these type of things are there. that is as a public policy civil servants have to bring a new orientation to the rules by which the every day conduct of public affairs has to be regulated so civil service what happened they had to contribute uh, to the you know shaping and not you know they had to bring some innovative idea the basic objective of any government pertain to provision of economic infrastructure and goods and services resolution of conflict situation there may be conflict situations okay so that bureaucrat has to identify uh, you know uh, do something in a conflict you know, here you can see that in kerala secretary you know uh, those who have not got a job through psc that of agitation to place and uh, such so what type of uh, help we can render so the bureaucrat can also suggest to the uh, politicians you know sir we can go like this if we do like this these are the things you know like that okay the protection of natural resources that is also the duty of the bureaucrat stabilization of economy is the responsibility of not that you know uh, on taking loan 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 and uh, giving salary and pension it is not bureaucracy and finance minister's job finance minister everybody has you know stabilize the economy of the state okay not that you know we are paying salary and pension is not a great task that is not your achievement we paid salary and pension you pay salary if somebody work you have to pay the salary no problem at all you have to pay but that is not an achievement achievement will be when you do development uh, that the other other things are do it in you know if somebody works you know they have to you have to pay salary if somebody retires you have to pay give pay, pension also that is only normal procedure and uh, you know you were significant achievement in life were the you know development take place and employment generation many other things and standard of education you know when it goes up uh, everything you know there we we have to convert now i just want to tell you one thing one example i am just telling you see recently i have seen one uh, you know um, just uh, tv talk television talk and a few days back and uh, i don't want to tell the name the question was asked to the renowned educationist of oh, in kerala okay so one our uh, anger was asking a question to this academician that during this our uh, present ministry and uh, it is as regard education is concerned out of 100 how many marks he will give remember this man is a member of higher education council also okay highly respected figure renowned figure and when such questions are asked he should show professionalism rather than obliging the either ruling party or no opposition party we are asking question from a professional so he should know, uh, give the answer in a professional way okay we are not telling that ne negative or positive but when i heard it was his uh, remark was to satisfy or please the government only whereas i was not uh, uh, agreeing to that also see the anger was asking you know what is going on in abdul kalam uh, what is that uh, our uh, university in 
examination is not conducted question paper leaked out and you know many many uh, this uh, online uh, this thing you know books are not available there is no office uh, and infrastructure facilities are not there there is no lord boarding and lodging uh, for uh, students and uh, you know they are controlling all engineering colleges in india okay i'm uh, sorry kerala sorry kerala and so kanger asked for during the five years as regard education is concerned and um, how much mark you will give and uh, so the gentleman was said so if the question was asked if you know school level or uh, higher secondary level or whatever is there okay it is okay i have no objection but he was asking higher education if it is 10th class or 11th class our ravindranath but higher education is jali we are not uh, blaming anybody okay i am just telling you so he asked uh, what is the how you will rate the government in higher education in concerned in kerala during the past five years. and the, he the gentleman gave 70 or 75 out of 100 now i am leaving the matter to you that uh, whether it is justifiable or not if 75 70 or 75 or 80 80 80 he told 80 mark 80 it is not justifiable please i am not an expert it is not justifiable if our, our education institutions are that much uh, capable of then why our people are going to either to bangalore bangalore chennai or some other place for study if renowned educational institutions are here with all research facilities infrastructure facilities why our people we are going outside for higher education why none of our educational institution is ranking even out of 300 none okay why so such a question you know when we ask we always expect us expect very neutral very professional you know approach from the concerned person he told 80 out of 100 uh, 100 now you think over it more than 150 engineering colleges are there many of them they are engineering college there are some many colleges are going to uh, they have made a request to the state government to they let the some of the colleges they want to close and they want to convert into poly, uh, polytechnic because it is not viable students are not there no admission nothing is there so they cannot survive they want to convert their engineering college into politic, uh, polytechnic these are the, i don't want to tell many uh, more, but uh, don't engineering college are functioning very well no i am not telling like that that is you know due to the various government support and the qualified faculty and other things but other engineering colleges are not uh, some of them are not up to the mark okay so we Thank <laughs> you. 
Now clear. Sound clear and la sound clear and la. Sir, I'm going to hear the sound clear, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
हेलो हेलो
ൂരോക്രാറ്റ്സ്റ്റാർട്ട്ഫുള്ളി Uh, central government this is central whenever we are appointing a civil servant a government service you know all appointment letter is mailed in the name of president of india civil service president of india is pleased to appoint you in the grade of so and so and so and so and uh, subject to the following like condition ha ah, okay uh, like that it, uh, then you know uh with terms and conditions scales you know increment uh, everything ltc medical facilities very 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 like that and in uh, probation period and uh, you know uh, regularization whatever is there you know permanent uh, this thing uh, satisfactory performance everything then there is one issue there in the government uh, appointment letter in the government <laughs> okay, okay 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 Okay. Ah. Okay. In the government uh, appointment letter, normally there are certain terms and conditions that is re- regarding wages, the benefits, and uh, you know medical reimbursement, gratuity, pension, LTC, whatever is there, you know, uh, everything they are mentioning. Then there is a confidentiality clause. There is a confidentiality clause. that is you know you are during your service with uh, uh, either the state government or central government you are not uh, uh, supposed to leak out any message to outside uh, government interactions or whatever is there without the approval of the competent authority okay then uh, you know the normally the appointment is made in the name of the president of india if it is in the state uh, it is in the name of you know here Uh, schedule man employment it is in the name of the governor of the state okay appointment everything same way for information any disciplinary action against a ias officer president of india is to uh, suspend you from the service that is also the dismiss you from the service so what happen that they are having security of job also they cannot be removed from service without adhering to the norms that is procedure there is service rule they issue charge sheet they should they should give time give for giving reply inquiry committee has to be consulted presiding officer should be there inquiring officer should be everything finally the report will go they will review it and you know, then a committee will scrutinize this finally a decision will be taken by the government to take action against ye uh what is that civil servant or not so this is one number two their job is you know either retirement age will be 60 or 62 yes 60 is the 62 is the okay uh, 62 of course in technical field and other thing but normally 60 after uh, that they are getting pension at the time of retirement i just say Ah, uh, at the time of retirement, they are getting gratuity, program fund, everything, all these things for the medical facility. Sometimes, you know, everything there. So their job is secured, though they are transferred from one place to another place. But their salary, nothing will be changed, and they are having a secured job. And peace of mind is the the when you are having the you know permanent job in your hand, then almost you know you can uh, at least contribute a lot. Then another thing, advisory, advisory expertise. 
you can advise either the minister or the concerned people when you are in the committee or something like that through your experience watch experience and knowledge you can give us the advice advice also to the government okay. then another thing another thing another thing uh, the quality of policy uh bureaucrat should therefore not be indifferent to party i just told you i i wanted to tell you that earlier i was telling you know bureaucrat should not be indifferent to party predict they should be neutral they should not see and political angle this person belongs to this party no, no. Uh, politicians are not being salary to you okay then another thing civil servant should not be indifferent to the ends of government i don't whatever government desire uh, whatever the government policy decisions are there it is to be implemented by the bureaucrats are concerned okay then public policies are made implemented and evaluated by public official and by governmental institution duly authorized these are the things okay nothing is there now another point which i want to mention policy implementation involves a number of step, steps whenever you policy employ, uh, you know when we want to employ, uh, implement many steps are there you know first of all you know how to execute when to execute how to execute who are the people involved what are the resources required for implementing any policy fact finding everything you know what are the problems you know which may come uh, you know you will face all these things bureaucrats play a dual role in performing output functions of executive policy and program and also input functions also okay that is he has to execute policies and orders are prescribed by the government he has to execute what are government policies are the now for example uh, take the example here uh, our uh, corona time government uh, of kerala decided to give kit to ration, you know, through ration shop so food secretary has to ensure that is the government policy so they are doing that and okay well like that government policy they have to implement then maintain and keep the order of all administrative apparatus which lies within official charge every rule which you have made or whatever instruction you are getting from the government everything you know you have to keep in a file everything you know orally you cannot do anything you are getting instruction from the top it is through order or something whatever is there all order you have to keep in the file and you have to maintain under safe custody you have to keep the file you should not leak out uh, whatever government decision there are certain secrecy clause and many things are there unnecessary you should not though people are having right uh, under uh, right to information but even though you have to keep the your record properly you know others should not have access to it you know there will create unnecessary problem right to information legally you can give legally but otherwise you know uh, so many people will come to secretariat or department take away the information that is not so not advisable okay then apart from being the chief formulators of the bill now when the parliament or legislative assembly makes a bill it, that type of bills are formulated prepared by the bureaucrats bill okay legally you know all points should be covered everything you know their expert knowledge is required because uh, when it is introduced in the legislative assembly or parliament several questions may arise minister has to give the reply for it okay so we have to draft the manual as for it bill properly okay otherwise it will be embarrassing for the minister okay implementing policy bureaucrats okay direct powers when uh, three step will bureaucrats it continue to exposure of the bureaucrats of political matters okay this, this could lead to a position where the minister is totally dipped sometime what happen no uh, everything is with uh, bureaucrats so minister is also pure, purely depend upon the secretary here the problem lies when you are completely a minister is depend upon this uh, bureaucrats then problem may create bureaucrats will misutilize so many things he will do if uh, uh, the minister is not strict he is you know like the casual approach or something like that finally that this man will take advantage also so 
we have to we should be little you know careful also they should be within control also that should be they are good but they have to work within the limit they cannot cross the legitimate rega that is the thing which i want to tell a minute a bureaucrat should function within the limit not above the limit okay now this could lead okay now policy monitoring policy monitoring also i told you policy monitoring so of course whenever the policy is implemented we have to monitor the this thing various method of policy monitoring is taken depending upon the nature of you know when we make a policy the financial implication whether it is going in the right way any other uh, problems are there and uh, target is achieved or not and uh, future steps what we have to take uh, and uh, so bureaucrats have a specific role in policy monitoring now analysis policy analysis bureaucracy and policy analysis Bure, uh, policy analysis consists of not only examining and bringing improvement in the process of formulating policies but also evaluating the choices and outcome sometimes you know choice if it is not this and what is the next step sometimes the policy what happened no we are unable to execute then what are the next step alternative step that are the way to find certain as per the policy if we are unable to go uh, you know execute then what is the alternative step uh, we have to take that also we have to analyze okay so public policy can provide all answers to public defects also sometimes deficiency will be there so what are deficiency is there we can overcome we can overcome there is no problem at all and um, you know nevertheless through po public policy analysis information on priorities that type of things you know so bureaucrats what are the things they have to do policy formulation there should be some clarification of values objectives and criteria for, for policy making before you make any policy you have to keep in mind the following thing purpose should be known some uh, you know political feasibility should be there belief perception deter you should be determinant no this type of things are there no another thing uh, you have to standard future nine standard features of policy formulation nine ombad standard features of policy formulation one there should be some clarification of values objectives and criteria for policy when before you make any policy the clarification should be the values should be the objective should be the criteria should be the number two the method should also include identification not only to i told you three the method should include preliminary estimation approximate expenditure initially then afterwards then afterwards you know how much expenditure will be the finally before we fully implement how much total expenditure will be the then horizon for considering the possible results of the alternative policy that okay i told you uh, then method should include an effort to decide whether the issue of important enough to make more comprehensive analysis worthwhile nowadays an evaluation is not done properly in it it should be done properly you know whenever we make a, any any policy decision if it is not evaluated properly analysis is not done properly uh, then what happen we you know uh, we cannot uh, the financial problem will face uh, there may be state government will face financial problem so proper analysis expenditure reduction wherever we can save money everything you know we have finance minister has to see and implement the policy now another thing is that bureaucrats are often hard pressed you know by day to day cases and workload see bureaucrats are also having lot of work lot of work you know they are unable to move from the seat they cannot lay, take leave because ministers always they will call them and they will ask they will take um, many many uh, clarifications and uh, they will assign many many responsibility so they are overburdened so uh, then another thing accept a pattern of senior civil servant the one more thing training is also required for this type of people now what happens whenever you are, you are recruited as bureaucrat you know whether ias ips or whatever is there irs there is a refresher course your ias training or ips training is not enough there is institution of public administration is there administrative staff college is there oh, they are what happened they are undergoing training on various aspect because you know new new things are coming so they have to undergo 
ref, uh, attend the refresher courses arranged by the government of india through administrative college uh, staff college in hyderabad or in the institute of public administration or they are deputing abroad you know for getting you know awareness on various topics so that uh, whatever uh, you know they will be well equipped with uh, modern you know the knowledge and they will help the government to chuck out any plan in future so attending training program is don't think that only after getting ias everything is over no they are also afterward they are going for training also advanced training so advanced training in simla also there is a institute and for advanced training there is, so advanced training also is because because the world is changing you know but previously computer was not there. so computer and everything now digital so all modern this thing tools usage of use getting data as inputs and mis everything you know all data non information you should have cyber you know this thing <coughs> everything now policy analysis i told you now in the establishment and implementation of public policy three sources could be identified legislative institution bureaucrats and interest groups or other elements of civil society in society civil society you know lot of some other groups are also there you know when we implement policy whether some you know it is affecting certain groups that we have to see uh, okay other policy makers now why why i am telling when we are uh, 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 you know implementing national uh, you know citizenship register whether anybody is affected group of people the all these thing we have to see so that uh, uninterrupted uh, or you know smoothly we can see this type of things okay now political office bearers or ministries are responsible for decision pertaining to the policy formation ultimately minister is responsible okay but you know the bureaucracy is reporting to the minister so good advice we have to provide some people may accept some people may not accept but even the you to give when you are giving advice you have to give the right direction okay uh, you have to make the minister you know understand that if you are not doing these are the problems involved okay this is the duty of the bureaucrat okay now bureaucrats are engaged in the policy process i told you they should have a innovative policy not only traditional creative innovative some decisions everything suggestion everything is required so he they are they to function as an advisor also and a political office bearers of what course action to so there will be pressure minister belongs to a political party but uh, that is there then when, but your advice should be neutral okay the policy process that involves a close cooperation between bureaucrats and political executive so bureaucrats always you know there is a close relation between political executive that is minister today uh, that minister belongs to a particular party afterwards you know you have to report to some other party okay a party <coughs> to minister who is belonging to some other party so we will read more about their role in our next unit okay now delphi delphi technique delphi technique this is one of the forecasting technique developed you can read this but even though just one thing i am just telling you delphi technique it is one of the forecasting technique developed in united states of america by nc dagi and associate in the rand corporation usa it gradually gained important as a group decision making tool this in world suppose if you are having any problem with, from within the organization and you are taking the help of from other outside organization also for a solving certain particular program problem when we are having certain problem internally we are taking involving certain people externally we are uh, you know involving certain people to solve to and seeking certain suggestion from external agencies and uh, outward we are implementing the forecasting made by each expert is revealed each and everybody will contribute and a major key to the success of this technique lies in anonymity so everybody will make his own opinion if any problem is there this is a delphi technique internally externally uh, you know we will discuss each other outward we will take a decision okay other things you can what simulation technique means creating 
a real life situation that is the thing you can read that it is there already what is rti right to information right to information act now plays a vital role in india because whatever is coming in the newspaper whatever is coming in the tv uh, you know this is the data which is supplied as per the rti act right to information act plays a vital role to know that you know government has to keep in mind that this is except whatever they do uh, public they are watching the uh, their action so people can seek uh, i know any 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 data by applying to the uh, you know 100 percent you know by paying some nominal fee so government has to give the reply also within the stipulated period that is called rda rta right right information is a tool against red tapism that you cannot do whatever the way which you want okay it is RTA is the role of the officials in implementing the right to information laws so as to make the administration transparent and strengthen the democratic institutions of the country the RTA was a tool against bureaucratic red tapism previously whatever they were doing it was not knowing to known to anybody nowadays utmost transparency should be there because people general people will uh, public will uh, ask you to give the answer for it so that we, whatever they are doing uh, so for example how much vaccination covid vaccination so government is telling like that and we are asking data for it and right to info under right to information act so so government has to give actual position in writing to the person because sometimes you know this type of information will go to court so under right to information whenever we give it should be authenticated uh, uh, this thing and real uh, because with this you know sometime uh, uh, you know uh, people may approach for any other purpose you know to a court also so right to information is very transparent not only india is fortunate to uh, have this type of legislation so government is taking proper care otherwise see you take it here so many allegations are going on no so how they are getting the information under rta right information otherwise our opposition leader or other leaders cannot you know uh, up, uh, take uh, you know make any press conference with the papers in my hand like that you know that is under right information you understood what i am saying so bureaucrats should take utmost care while executing their function irrespective of any any he their affiliation to any party or loyalty towards any party as per my opinion that is they should be neutral they should be professional they should be very very honest and with the utmost integrity there to function so that there will not be any problem and not only that all they should keep in mind that they always they are having certain responsibility towards the society they should not involve any type of corruption or some other thing it is very bad they it will spoil the reputation of this type of uh, you know uh, cadre that should not be there that is the thing which i want to come mm-hmm. any doubt if you are having about this particular unit you can ask otherwise i'll go to unit 13 any doubt you are having okay any doubt you are having okay now or at last uh, you, you know last one you can ask 10 more minutes i will take uh, unit number 13 contemporary context of indian bureaucracy contemporary context context of indian bureaucracy unit 13 contemporary context of uh, indian bureaucracy see in recent time the role of bureaucracy has gone a lot of change for a number of reason see previously this much burden was not there for indian bureaucracy now the entire thing is changing people expectation is going up and the different role a bureaucrat has to play the political party ruling party is changing and everything is changing so role of role of bureaucracy has undergone lot of change for a number of reason so 
the change in role of the state in the contemporary context brought about a significant change in the profile of the bureaucracy. So, bureaucrat, their profile should be like that only to meet the future challenges ahead. Okay. Now, within the opening of the economy, as well as growing accent to privatization and right-sizing, what is right-sizing? That is, we should have an organization structure as per needs only. We should not recruit unwanted people in a department or ministry. Because if you are less people are there, there is no problem. More people are there, more problem are there. Because after recruitment, if recruitment is made, it is difficult to terminate them. For terminating them, certain rules are there. It is not easy. Many it will take sometimes months and years to terminate an individual. So think before you act. Okay. So before recruiting, the, see what we have to do? We have to recruit the right person for the right job and for the and at the right time. Okay. At the right time also, right job also, right person also. I like that, you know, right place also you have to deploy. So these type of things are required. And, uh, you know, right sizing, correct. What is required, what, whoever is required, that much person only should be recruited. Excess manpower should be reduced. One more thing which I want to convey, not in the book, that the government introduced a VR scheme. Government introduced VR scheme to reduce excess manpower ex uh, existing in government public sector undertaking, government or whatever is the state government or central government. Okay. We are voluntary retirement scheme is uh, started because with uh, an intention of reducing the excess manpower existing in public sector undertaking, government, central government or state government. So, and not only that, it will have to right size, you know, the limited. Because what happened, you know, some organization, it is not the government mistake also, we have to provide employment for on compassionate ground also not according to the vacancy position, like KSRTC, a lot of uh, employment is taking place on compassionate ground, you know, husband is uh, died or something like something like that, you know. So, uh, sometimes, you know, we have to keep in mind these type of things and uh, as far as possible, right sizing should be there. Lean organization is fruitful nowadays, you know, not uh, one secretary is reporting to another secretary, one general manager is reporting to another general manager, no. So, Top two heavy should not be there. Yeah? Top two heavy. One secretary, another secretary. And one joint secretary, another joint. Not like that. One company, one general manager is reporting to another general manager. No. So we should uh, prevent such thing, you know, in advance. Then you know, that at least we should know how many general managers are there. So uh, either if the person is not having job, he should be transferred to some other unit. Like that, like that, like that. So, um, lean organization is preferable. Okay. Then, what is downsizing to bring down the number of persons due to various reasons? Due to privatization, now we have to bring down the size. If private company is taking the government company, definitely they will not take that much stuff. For example, now BPCL or whatever it is, thousands of people are working. So, who are you taking? Suppose, 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 Reliance is taking or somebody else is taking. Do you think that um, yeah, somebody will take this much people? Because huge liability is there toward their salary and other parts. They will take only limit number, limited number of people and the remaining people where they will go. So, it is not only that, whenever they take, they will do downsizing. That is bringing down the total strength of the staff is called downsizing. Right sizing I already told. So, bureaucracy technically has been under employment, you know what is under employment. Under employment means, say, suppose you are LDC. Suppose LDC, you are applying. You are, see, application, the requirement is only graduate. Suppose LDC. You are having MTech, MPhil, PhD, something like that, like that, you know. That is over qualification you are having, but you are getting 
small job. Not a small job, uh, not according to your uh, qualification or something. That is called underemployment. So it is happening nowadays, you know. You can see BSc, anywhere, a lot of qualification or people are having. Even KSRC, KSRC driver and conductor is MTEC people are the ME people are the lot of people are they hiding their qualification. I know very well. Even in the uh, conductor of KSRT was taking UGC net class. UGC, UGC net class. Okay. So they are so they are all overqualified. But you now you take the example of bank. When bank examination, they are all you know having a lot of qualification, but uh, for clerical post, you know, they are applying. So that is called underemployment. Okay. So bureaucracy technically has been efficient from an organization, but you see have exceeded administrative power due to tendency towards self uh, okay, this is okay uh, aggrandizement that is the act of increasing wealth or prestige or power or scope of something an act undertaken to you know increase your own power and influence we should not you know uh, undertake you know to increase your own power and uh, you know influence you know Though your bureaucracy is a permanent job, what is permanent regular? You know what is permanent regular? See, one more new thing which I am going to tell, kindly keep in mind this. Permanent regular, permanent job is normally in the central government and state government job only. Others are regular. Everybody is telling I am permanent, he is permanent in last and bro. L and D, he is permanent in so and so, he is permanent. What is permanent? Permanent is Government of India, Government of Kerala, not autonomous bodies. Electricity board or water authority. Water authority provide, I don't know. So then, uh, you know, some other undertaking like Keltron, it is not a, it is not, a, you know, the permanent job or something like that. That is a regular job. They will not be removed or anything, but government is, because, you know why? Your probation period is, uh, you know, one year it will be extended further sometimes you know when we were working in the central government we used to get a confirmation letter after probation after 15 years of service earlier in the central government because once we uh, anybody is confirmed uh, made them permanent it will be difficult to remove that person very difficult by only by adhering to the rules and regulations of service board so they will just drag the things and uh, in railway also, they will make a permanent employee after extending a lot of and the probation like that, you know. Okay, now that is so uh, that I told you about the difference between regular and uh, the probation means only to, 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 to know uh, how you are functioning for a limited period after appointment, you know. For six months, then they the one month you are uh, the you be watched. Whether you are regular, you are behaving properly, discipline, interpersonal skill, communication, and you know, all these things they will watch and uh, your work uh, and you know, everything they will watch and on satisfactory completion of the training, probation period, you will be regularized. If you are regularized, you will get letter in writing from the employer. Okay, and not only that. Suppose if they don't want your, uh, your service, before completion of the probation period, they have to remove you. Okay, if you are six months, after spending six months and three days, you know, they cannot remove you, you know. If they want to remove you, suppose six months probation is there, before six months, they have to terminate you, just one day before or whatever is there. So that is the thing. Otherwise, they have to make, uh, you know, make you regular. Now, Okay, now major character, characteristic of hierarchy in the organization, uh, this thing. Hierarchy is very, very essential in bureaucracy. I told you already the position which you are having. And uh, they are having professional qualification. I already told you we are fortunate that we are having uh, very bureaucrats with uh, very good qualification, sound qualification, brilliant, uh, you know, uh, academic career, everything, professional career, everything our people are having. Okay, and uh, rules and procedures you should. Bureaucrats should know the rules and regulations of the 
you know rules and regulation they should know properly because you know already many rules are there there to understand and uh, you know, constitutional requirement so whether it is labor law whether it is a mother law everything bureaucrats should know if they don't know they have to read okay that is the thing then specialization in some area they should have the specialization okay okay the bureaucrats they should have the functional specific and based on that you know division of uh, this thing labor should also take place now here what happen bureaucrats tasks are divided into functionally bureaucrats sometimes they will be divided in various area sometimes some uh, bureaucrat is engineer so uh, he will be uh, positioned or he will be become managing director of some technical organization as well sometimes you know sometimes it is there so based on their qualification and professional qualification they will have the uh, functional job also then organizational resources the resources of the organizations are distinct from the bureaucrats who cannot use them in their individual capacity official revenues and private in income are strictly separated okay you when you are working in a government organization you should not have you when you are getting salary everything from government you are not supposed to work in the private companies private uh, source you know uh, that is not allowed you can the service uh, rule there is when you are working with an organization you are not supposed to uh, to associate with any any other organization what revenue or salary you are getting from the government that should be otherwise you, know, you have to inform the organization that i am involved in so and so so and so you have to seek approval from them it is like that okay organization resources now uh, besides assign in the day fun uh, function of this bureaucratic model of question okay wherever it is required crisis state so and so now max weber bureaucracy is universal everywhere it is the social phenomena it is a social phenomena and the means of carrying community action to rationally ordered society action the world over this type of bureaucracy is there okay now bureaucratic organization max weber argued is the most technically efficient form of government okay many find this problematic as it is possible to identify many anomalies in the weberian anomalies mean grievances okay as well as as well as communication and information distortion knowledge of the files can mean routine and living by the book and so on like that you know and uh, karl marx also told us uh, say we, the day to day administration is not merely guided by rationality but this, some people are you know making suggestion the uh, it is okay that you, know, you can just read that okay now uh, weberian model is what is weberian model it was developed by max weber an early german sociologist weber argued that the increasing complexity of life would simultaneously increase the demands of citizens for government services people prefer government services especially female our uh, girls you know they uh, prefer government jobs you know very well that they want secure job or health facilities or whatever is there or secure job or whatever is there they, they prefer government but you have to keep in mind that government sector also limited job facilities are there that is also there now recently i heard that nearly 23 lakhs application recently public service commission has got and just recently it has been 23 lakh people prefer to have government because security of job is there all facilities are available pensionable job and sometimes this type of things are not available in the private sector private sector cannot afford or paying that also because they are running on commercial ground they want to make money so this type of, they will give when you work and after your retirement they are not bothered also some organizations are giving but why well, sometimes you know pf and other thing you are getting something some pension or something like that otherwise you know many people are getting only during the service many other benefit bonus like that like that they are all getting now 
what is bureau pathology bureau pathology bureau pathology mean bureau pathology that is the main manifestation of exaggerated bureaucratic behavior okay they include resistance to change some bureaucrat and obviously reliance on rules and that nothing very strict they will not you know what rule is there you know they will not go beyond that you know very arbitrary man real bureaucrat resistant to change he will, he will not alter uh, he will not change who are you telling he will not obey this type of people are there that is called bureau pathology that behavior okay so weber i already told you downsizing i already told you what is downsizing that is bringing down the number of people who are working okay now weberian okay wherever is required i am just telling you role of bureaucracy in india now role of bureaucracy in india. other things just read if any doubt is always you can ask me okay bureaucracy in india okay they are you know i told you already introductory part bureaucracy much criticized the concept because they are according to the tune of according according to the wish or uh, wishes of the political master they are functioning so they are neither showing loyalty towards the society nor sometimes so and so so and so okay that is not correct they should remember that many i don't know whether uh, some people civil servant they should remember we are having responsibility to the society do in a neutral way honest way do give very good suggestions professional suggestions understand just you know make a, your real boss to understand the uh, implications of wrong policy implemented all this thing okay now it is now a lot of criticism is coming here now you know here shivashankar uye suraj corruption cases many other cases that is that will unnecessary create bad image on bureaucracy that should be avoided there now the growing impact of liberalization now what happened in role of bureaucracy in india is a after 1991 1991 manmohan singh bv narasimha rao that is you know liberal uh, globalization liberalization whatever is there whatever happened the rule of bureaucrat is really changed modern world is the world of specialization world has become very small anybody can you know export anything import anything and you know travel anywhere you know a trade business or whatever is the so total communication Uh, re the revolution it revolution everything is taking place our people are working abroad lots of lots of people are working abroad and that company is investing here foreign companies are investing here we are investing the the world has become one community like that not 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 so these are i the during this crucial period bureaucrat they had to understand the changes taking place in the country or in the state okay so what are the necessity because can i apply one thing more kerala is very why i am telling kerala i am just only an example you can go kerala uh, i treat a all states equal uh, though we are born in kerala but for me as an indian citizen all states are equal here people are very educated everything there is no problem but uh, investment is not coming we are very poor in providing employment and i think 24 25th something state about i think only 28 state is there and 24 or 25th state that easy way of doing business you know how it is that why you are not taking any policy for 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 that you know open this thing you know single window clearance system here 40 window uh, you know uh, clearance system is there it is not like that too if you want investment you have to uh, make a policy like that and not only theoretical practically also you have to do that help the investors to do the investment in kerala then only 
the new generation, thousands of people are graduating or post graduation we are having. They will get employment otherwise. They will have to go either abroad and abroad going is not easy nowadays. And our other state is also not easy because many states have yesterday I read an article in Haryana. They are reserving all posts for Haryana bees. Many posts. So this type of local uh, re regulation will be there. So we have to keep in mind, we have to create job for ourselves rather than giving election promises. So bureaucrats should formulate in consultation with political parties or political bosses that we should do something good for the you know, coming younger generation and uh, you know, attracting investors for uh, foreign uh, countries to Kerala and make them you know, easy you know, clearance, everything, you know, peaceful. And the one of the biggest hurdle in Kerala is the trade union movement. And there also we have to keep in mind that, uh, you know, uh, we have to just minimize, we have to help the investor so that people will get the employment and uh, let them contribute a lot for the state's program. That is required for that. Very good policy formulation is required, bureaucrat, can play a vital role. Okay. Some features of the bureaucracy of India can be summarized as follows. One, strong in bureaucracy in India. Strong, only just five minutes, strong binding character. Bureaucrats are having a weight. They are not understanding that they have to serve the people. Okay, now, non-partisan advice to political leadership, in the, I told you already. Administrative and managerial capacity of services. Administrative capacity should be there for all civil servants without fear, as per rules. And, okay, you there to do that. Effective coordination between institutions and governance. We have to, they have to, because interpersonal skill is lacking. They, because of the egoism, they are unable to interact with the other agency. They think that, you know, he's junior to me. Why should I interact? It should not be like that. Nobody is junior or senior. All are rendering service, either to the state or to the society. So, you, unless you interact with the people, you cannot understand the problem of other people. So, interact. Then, you should have coordination between, as I told you, then leadership. No need to tell that leadership, able leadership, and uh, should be there. We are we are having, and other st uh, state uh, central government was also having very good uh, uh, bureaucrats and other thing. And service delivery, you are whatever you are supposed to do, you should do, and uh, that is service. Okay, that delivery how you are delivering, that is also there. Then provision of continuity and change, and in you know, there should not be any resistance to change the in administrative this thing matter if it is digitalization if it is something else and always be prepared for the change whatever you know new government or whatever is there and one more last line before highlighting the changes complexation of indian bureaucracy let us first understand the major role of bureaucracy especially in the policy matter so let me conclude like this a bureaucracy is playing a vital role either in the state or in the central government for formulating many policies, uh, you know, uh, for the welfare of uh, the society. Okay. Now, initially, before formulation of any policy, they have to do preparatory work, they have to collect the data, and, uh, you know, they have to cross check and they have to see the existing rules, and you have to see the judgments, uh, various judgments, uh, either by the High Court or uh, Supreme Court, and uh, they have to. Uh, professionally draft the laws and uh, submit it to the minister and minister will submit to legislative assembly and uh, assembly will uh, discuss uh, make uh, you know uh, discuss a debate on this and uh, finally uh, you know a decision will be taken by the uh, by jointly by the uh, by, by the MLAs or whatever is there uh, legislative assembly only on, if it is a financial matter after passing the legislative assembly, everything, then it will go to the governor. 
in the our in the president you know that, that is the financial bill will be passed by with the, uh, that you know it has to be approved by the either governor or the president of india lok sabha any finance bill will be passed only by the lok sabha and uh, afterwards it will go to president for concurrence okay for, uh, approval the same way here governor also so everywhere in governor secretary political uh, this thing also in secretary lot of bureaucrats are there so they have to understand the bureaucracy i told you the definition starting introduction i told you what are their function by, and they have to do honestly they have to render they are already we are having a lot of wonderful you know bureaucrats uh, earlier also a lot of people were there and even coming generation also we have to keep in mind that with the changes taking place around the world and within the you know various states and and you know here one more thing you have to keep in mind ias or ip whatever cadre you are having is interchangeable sometimes you know uh, kerala cadre will be changed to some other cadre sometimes you have to serve in the central government also so you should know the culture the religion the needs of the people and the geographical structure of our whole country everything very well so bureaucrat and after seeing it when they are getting a lot of experience real life experience and it will be easy for them to formulate any policy because they are well educated well trained okay well trained. they got a lot of you know, this thing and nowadays additional qualification also every civil servants are having this will help them our secretary our minister our state as well as the country as well this is the thing which i want to convey to you about uh, the role of bureaucracy at uh, time being and tomorrow the balance will be there and you now kindly tell me any doubt uh, if you are having of course little uh, delayed because some uh, interruption was there kindly ask me any question if you are having this is the time which you can ask any question please ask any doubt you are having you know you have you can ask i will be able to give that answer whatever i took today please ask any any question you can hear me properly hello hello ஒரு ஆ